Welcome to Field Sports Britain. Coming up, Roy is reassuring dog walkers. Stalking with dogs and old deers that don't like stalking. George Digweed is answering thorny questions about cheating in clay shooting. Hunting YouTube looks at the wider world of shooting on the internet and David's got a potential big cat to worry about in news. First, Crow shows that there is life after stubbles and not all decoys are created equal. It's pretty clear Crow hasn't been pigeon shooting for a while. The human pigeon magnet is a bit touchy because Dom and David have shown up late, delaying the creation of the Hedge Interaction Deployment Tool, or HIDE, and the placing of the drastic end contraptions of yokels, decoys. Now, it may look to the casual observer that this young crop holds no interest whatsoever for a hungry woody, but don't be so quick to dismiss. This is a field of uh, winter barley that's been drilled. It's up three, four inches now. It's been in probably fortnight, fortnight to three weeks. Uh, what this was, this was a spring bean stubble. And if you come over here, and on the top here, loads of beans in amongst it. So don't pay to write off a stubble once it's been ripped up. The beans are still here. There's quite a lot of beans here. There's a few pigeons here, not many but I'm desperate to get out and try out my new gun, so I thought I'd get out for a couple of hours this afternoon. It's been raining. Uh, we've been sat in the shed for about two hours because uh, you boys didn't want to get wet. But the sun's come out now. We're going to give it a couple of hours and see how we get on. But always keep an eye on the fields, once they, even once they start coming up. A, it, especially with beans, they, they can get back on them again. So beans means birds, and just in case they haven't been eating their carrots, A1 Decoys has sent field agent crow some larger-than-life decoys for pigeons with a penchant for bigger boned birds. So I reckon that size does matter, uh, and if it does then this will be an effective decoy. I think we're going to need a bigger boat. I've heard about these at the shows, my friend just, just come in, these are from A1 Decoys. They breed a big down south, don't they? It's like a magnum pigeon decoy, um, considerably larger, three or four times larger than your average wood pigeon. Bum, 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 bum. Exactly the same coloration, um, same as their normal stacking flocks shell decoys. But the idea is that they're more visible from further away and therefore they're more likely to draw the pigeons. Never used them before, never seen them used before. They have a good reputation amongst goose shooters who use giant super-sized geese decoys uh, and apparently they do work so uh, only one way to find out isn't it give it a go so there is method in their madness decoying is all about attention grabbing which is why after just a few seconds crow is wondering if he needs the worry to add movement to his outstretched ostriches pretty windy today the good thing is it muffles the, the sound of the shot so it's not scaring the pigeons as much as it would on a, on a still day. I'll give it another 10, 15 minutes, see what these birds are gonna do once they settle down after a couple of shots. As soon as he starts shooting, Mr. Grumpy disappears and Mr. Crow returns, though not noticeably with a sense of humor. Ruby, 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 Ruby. <laughs> Is it your f name today, the pair of you? Me off, because you're f getting on borderline at the moment. <laughs> the birds are more challenging than normal with a stiff breeze up their rears and potty mouth Holtam is appreciative of his opening today. few efforts. That's miles out. Mm. You've been getting lessons? No. You see that gun well, don't you? No, I don't love it. Yeah. Even drinks giants appreciate the shot. Dom may say that size isn't everything, but he likes to wave his telephoto lens around in the hide, even though we've asked him politely not to. He spots that Crow's pattern has a few holes in it, which means a change of choke. 
Crow's new bet and solid comes with interchangeable chokes. He has talked about the difference a choke can make before and is an advocate of custom chokes. This, together with shell choice, makes a huge difference to your pattern. The game ball cartridges that Crow uses deliver a naturally tight pattern anyway, so altogether Crow can reach further but with more room for error. I feel a bit with chokes, I usually use a quarter and a half, that's a good, ch good choke to use. But it all depends on what cartridge you're using. Some cartridges you use them out of a quarter choke and they're so open. Um, there's so many holes in the pattern, you get so many prick birds. So. But these cartridges are a tight cartridge anyway, so what it plays what. Uh, yeah. But I just feel about, especially if they like today where some of them are fairly long shots. Fairly long shots, so I've put a bit of tighter choking. Dom took some photos and you can see there was a bit of a hole in the pattern, so I just tightened it up and it's done the job really. Also, Crow typically has the tighter choke in the bottom barrel in readiness for a longer second shot, and it's easier to put a new shell in the top barrel if he takes just one shot. The denser pattern means you have to be more accurate, but these shots show what happens when most of the lead, rather than just a couple of pellets, hits the target. I'll put a full choke in, just to show you what the difference a full choke does. Would you eat that? Would I? No, I'm a vegetarian. Yeah, of course I'd eat it. I don't blame pieces. So apart from lead, what else have the pigeons been eating? Got uh, a bit of barley, a bit of oats, uh, one bean. These, these here are veg seeds. The chap who farms this, the ground next door, He's grown it on contract this year. There they are. Like miniature little peas. They do sow oats in with the vetch to hold it up so it don't go so flat. Tastes like peas, really. What are these it for? Don't know. Probably uh, either feed or uh, probably bird seed, I suspect. For feeding wild birds, wild bird mix. I suppose that's what it goes for. What Crow feared would be a dismal day has proved to be a very enjoyable few hours with some stratospheric birds shot, possibly attracted by the only decoys visible from space. Thank you very much Andy and Dom and if you'd like to know more about chokes and shot patterns please click on the link that's appeared magically up there behind me. Now for someone more interested in knitting patterns, it's David on the Field Sports Channel News Stump. This is Field Sports Channel News. A viewer has sent in a picture of an animal and we're not sure what it is. She saw this cat sunning itself in a field in Somerset. She says it's the size of a spaniel and its pointed ears make it look wild. Is it a big domestic cat? Is it a bobcat, a lynx or a wild cat hybrid? Please comment. Is your gun safe up to the mark? If it isn't, it's probably sensible to sort it out now. From the 15th of October 2014, police forces in England and Wales will be taking part in an initiative to ensure firearms are being kept and stored securely. New Home Office guidance allows the police to make unannounced visits to check on the security arrangements of certificate holders under certain circumstances. The police don't have any new powers of entry. Thanks to Basque for the story. A Canadian dog owner is in trouble after posting what she believes is her dog playing with the deer. Jamie Ray Fifield posted a video showing her three-year-old French bulldog, Ellie May, chasing a deer around her backyard in Nova Scotia. Ellie May eventually chased the deer into the woods. <laughs> Three deer stalkers have saved a deer. Sinkholes in the mining areas of Iowa and the USA are a fact of life. When three keen deer hunting school friends found a 10-point white-tailed buck at the bottom of one of them, they rigged up a late-night rescue by throwing a rope over the animal's antlers and pulling it out. An American state wildlife official who stood up to the antes now needs an armed guard. Maine Department of Inland Fisheries and Wildlife opposes a proposed ban on some kinds of bear hunting. Wildlife Division Director Judy Camuso is one of the officials who made a film on YouTube making the case for bear hunting. Afterwards, she received threats and now has an armed game warden by her side. Now, do you fancy doing some fox hunting? Next week is Hunting Newcomers Week running from the 18th to the 25th of October. 
Hunts from all over the country are organising events to attract new faces to the hunting field. For a full listing, go to bit.ly forward slash huntweek. An Australian TV show has put together a shooter and an ante to see if the fur flies. Steve Lee from the excellent Steve Lee Like Guns YouTube channel starred with an ante in the popular Living with the Enemy series on Australian television. They took part in duck shooting protests where Mr Lee declared he would like to take up the sport and expressed sympathy for the shooters, whilst animal liberationist Felicity Anderson had her first pig hunting experience with Steve, in which she attempted to sabotage the hunt. Steve said he believes Ms Anderson would rather hang around with a goat than with me. Thanks to viewer Gary Flockhart for sending in the story. Are you looking for a Christmas treat? The Olympia Horse Show runs from the 16th to the 22nd of December 2014. As well as horses and the famous Father Christmas finale, it includes the Kennel Club Agility Stakes sponsored by Skinner's Pet Foods, which reports a record number of entries to qualify for the finals. Go to olympiahorseshow.com. A deer hunter in the USA, out and about on his ground, was surprised to find a naked man. Casey Sanders said he went deer hunting on his property in Georgia when he heard a voice calling nearby. A man said, I'm naked, which prompted Casey to turn on the camera on his phone. It turns out the man had been overdoing it at a nearby Where? pop concert by the band are? Tomorrow World. The video has gone viral. And finally, a man flying a drone got a surprise when a hawk got territorial. Christopher Schmidt was flying his quadcopter over Cambridge, Massachusetts, when a hawk decided the machine had come close enough. The hawk was apparently uninjured. You are now to date with Field Sports Channel News. Stalking the stories, fishing, press back. Thank you, David. Later on, we'll have Roy fighting his way through the dogs to get to the deer. First, George Digweed has launched Club Digweed, which will exclusively host his own videos. But this month, you can watch the 23 times World Champions Q&A right here. Without question, I mean, we were shooting for the same purses, if not larger purses, 20 years ago. And I think that is a lack of professionalism that the sport has had over a long period of time. I think that if there was bigger money and a smaller amount of events, the sport would become more professional. But it's very accessible, and it's very accessible to the masses, which is great, but I think there are too many shoots, too many big shoots, and I think that the importance of a big shoot is somewhat lost. You know, I think in any sport, there is always gray areas. And I think that those gray areas can always be exploited. People do cheat. For me, I think that uh, you're only cheating yourself. I think that the level of accessibility to scorecards, et cetera, et cetera, would be met better by a scorecard where the referee signs the scorecard and then uses the scorecard as a punch system. The referee signs the card, if you miss a target he punches a hole in your scorecard, if you straight the stand you walk on to the next one and the referee signed it. For me that's a fail safe way of doing it. I know it's a radical change and idea but, but I think that if we're going to get the sport completely clean that's one of the ways forward in achieving that. The pressure side of it, I think, becomes slightly easier the more experienced you get. Pressure only comes from the mindset of what other people think about you. So I think that the more, the more experienced and the older I've got, the pressure's actually reduced. My focus every year is on the World Championships, whether that is English sporting or FITES sporting, that is my focus and that's where I mentally prepare and I try and build my shooting up to reach a crescendo two or three weeks before that event. That's going out, competing in local competitions on a Sunday, trying to do as many competitions as we possibly can, getting your timing built up so that your timing's spot on and correct, shooting different target presentations, different sequences, seeing different backgrounds, different light formations, and then easing off slightly coming up to the major event so that you've got 
a bit of gas in the in the oh. tank. Physically, as you can see, I don't work hugely on my physical training, but I am reasonably fit. And one thing I do do is work very hard on my hydration. We normally shoot in the middle of the summer for the World and European Championships. They're normally in hot countries. So by shooting in that environment, you'll naturally be dehydrated. So I overcook my hydration to make sure that, you know, I'm sort of fairly normal. Guns are not politically correct and media tend to shy away from them. That coupled with the fact that the the area of missing a target is is such a grey area because you cannot really, unless there's, there's some major advances in technology, um, cover the shot flight through the air in relation to where the target is. You know, if a if a pool player plays a shot and it rattles in the jaws and comes back along the cushion, everybody can see how close it was. Rory McIlroy makes a putt and it lips out and sits on the edge of the hole, everybody can see how close it was. A darts player puts one the other side of the wire, everybody can see how close it is. But with shooting, the actual element of the miss, nobody knows how close or how far away you were from hitting that target. So that's the big element of, of shooting that, that we've got running against us as opposed to other sports. Having said that, some great characters in there, you know, the top guys all have a lot of fun and, 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 and you know, there's some, there's some wonderful people that you could film and, 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 a, and make a great personality show out of. Um, whether it'll actually go mainstream media, I've got my doubts, but I think that's, that's because of a few reasons rather than just one. Thank you, George. For more information about Club Digweed, go to georgedigweed.com. Now Roy is trying his luck on a buck, but first he has to sidestep some ill-informed dog walkers. Huh? It's all kicking off. Roy already has a black eye and the natives are worried he's going to mistake a fat lab for a fallow bricket. Hey, look at this herd. It's a proper flock of dogs. Hi there. Oh, uh, just uh, in looking for a few deer. So, uh, yeah, yeah, we've uh, we've got to take a, a few out for the cull. I know, but uh, no, only a few. <laughs> There'll still be plenty. We've been doing it for years, so they're still they're still doing all right. Sorry? We're just no, no, not the, not at night. So uh, just on last light. So uh, just just as they become most active. So. Uh, they shall be. Sorry. <laughs> no, 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 no. Yeah, I thought it's best if we've got as many howling hounds around us as possible. And then, you know, that way it just keeps the deer on their toes um, and they're fully aware of what's going on and then we've got a real challenge to try and stalk to them. Roy knows we enjoy a bit of banter between stalkers and dog walkers, but instead he wants David to create a film of beauty, not controversy. Why can't we just have a nice, quality, beautifully filmed piece of stalking footage for once. Hmm? There's no need to have arguments. Well, here is some beauty. Eyeshadow Stop. tips. I don't know, the, the, which, which side's best? It's like Laura Ashley Furfall. Really? <laughs> Laura Ashley Furfall. Be careful because I'll make So apparently there. Roy got bashed yeah, by a bird sitting on his no, no, fist. No Could there, happen to anyone. To As the levels of doggage subside, Keith joins Chris and Roy. He's going to work along the valley floor to a stand of trees. If we speak anything, it'll come to you. If you speak anything, it'll come up to us. We are walking parallel to him on top of one of the sides of the valley. Roy is hoping one of us, or all of us, could strike lucky. Incredibly, considering the herds of hounds running wild just 50 yards away, we come across a perfect spiker, but Roy can't get a clear shot. Then in the background another unsighted deer pushes them off. We've been really unlucky. Keith probably moved it as he got into position. It's now a case of cat and mouse, but nothing presents a shot. We spent about 45 minutes trying to get onto them. We only had shots at the does, couldn't find the pricket again. And then on a neighbouring piece of ground, there's a sorrel chasing around a few does, just messing about there. So it's, uh, the rut's obviously sort of starting to show signs at the moment. But I'm hoping we can get over the other, other side of the estate before we lose the light and hopefully get into another group. But we'll have to see how the light goes. 
Over the other side we cover a lot of ground. Roy is not giving up without a fight, which is when quality German glass comes into its own. It really does pay to invest in decent optics because this is when you desperately need them. But for another few minutes yet yeah, I would still stand a chance of taking a shot if anything came out with some of the others. It really does get a bit tricky. It's not often we come away without venison, but it looks like kebabs tonight. <sighs> oh well, and we shall have to come out and try harder again. No, it's a real shame. Um, it's a shame those deer lifted just down the bottom. Otherwise we would have uh, got one within the first five minutes. But we've, uh, we've trekked and trekked and trekked and left it to last light. And we literally last light, um, trying to scan everywhere. But uh, unfortunately, there was nobody that wanted to come home and sit in the freezer. The rut should be warming up, and that's exactly what we'll have to take this evening as. A warm-up with makeup. Oh, that's sore. Thank you, Mr Lupton. Not often the postman fails to slip one in the letterbox. Now, from postal orders to world order, and it is Hunting YouTube. This is Hunting YouTube, which aims to show the best hunting and shooting videos that YouTube has to offer. It's the Red Rut in the Radopi Mountains. There, that has a ring about it. Yacht Bureau Karma has produced a three-parter about hunting on the border of Bulgaria and Greece. This is the exhausting part three, where he stalks into an old stag. On the other side of the Mediterranean, Eva Hunting is looking for red stags in Spain and having some success, according to this film. It's the opening of the bow hunting season across much of the USA. Leatherwood Outdoors is happily quick to put up recurve bow deer hunting archery buck 2014. This is the opening day of the whitetail archery season in Pennsylvania. It's all about the keen shot and eventually an eight-point buck presents itself. Here's a late season moose hunt in western Alaska. The bulls were not communicating until the temperature finally dipped and the woods came alive. Gilliland 440 calls in one from three quarters of a mile and his father shoots one too. Over in Sweden this is a bit of a tease for an elk hunt. Same species as moose, different name. It's good but at seven minutes long you may not feel the need to see the original and that's the wonder of YouTube. Bow hunting rabbits now there's an idea and here is the channel to introduce you to it this is cottontail tumblers backflips and bass drops you get the picture not all mornings start out perfectly but for downwind outdoors they end well see what happens as two coyotes stream into his call finally for a different take on pest control well sort of this film looks back at fox hunting before the legislation changed regarding hunting with hounds this footage has never been seen before and was all filmed at the turn of the century this century not the last one that's it for this week if you have a youtube film you would like us to pop Pop into the weekly top eight, send it in via YouTube or email me the link charlie at fieldsportschannel.tv. Well, for the shiniest show on YouTube, you of course have to keep it Field Sports Channel. Here's what's on last week's air gunning show Airheads. It's got it all this week. Rat shooting with thermal imaging equipment, shooting squirrels in the trees, the mysteries of pellet trajectory, sage words from Terry Doe, news and the best of YouTube's air gun output. If you shoot air guns, it's the latest from the world of air gunning. That's not all. Schools Challenge TV is going for a pre-season blast at the Oxford Gun Company. There's clay shooting galore. There's air guns. There's axe throwing. TSC Academy members are strutting their stuff and you can see the latest from Browning and from clothing company Sealant. Click on the link on the screen for more. Well, we are back next week as usual. Please subscribe, please go to our webpage, fieldsportschannel.tv, where you can click to like us on Facebook or follow us on Twitter or pop your email address into our contact box and we'll constantly contact you about Field Sports Britain, about Airheads, about Fishing Britain. This has been Field Sports Britain. Good hunting, good shooting, good fishing, and goodbye.